Obi-Wan's arms and legs, his entire body really, down to what felt like his very hair follicles, were burning, flaring with the aftermath of his copious exertions. When was the last time he had fought this hard and this long? Jabim? Geonosis? Both early conflicts, points of comparison that were next to useless in a fight like this so long after he had left that version of himself behind. The things he could do now, the feats he could perform, would have shamed his younger self four years ago. And so, the kind of exhaustion Kenobi now felt was of a different nature, a different core, than he would have experienced in those battles. Hits of Bacta and chewing on some kind of slimy root Kit Fisto had been passing around to the other members had kept him sharp and on his feet, but he had killed hundreds of men in this battle. He could kill thousands of droids in a single fight, of course, but these Imperials were nothing like the Confederacy, at least not when it came to their ground forces. His eyes hurt from the amount of rapid movement they had been making, his skin ached from the heat of a million and one close calls, and he couldn't keep his arms from trembling ever so slightly, muscles kept aloft and strong by the touch of the Force, having long ago surpassed their limitations. Having only sporadically rested, Kenobi wanted nothing more than for this battle to be over. But to make that happen, he needed to keep moving, at least for a while longer. Obi-Wan flanked to the right while Mace went straight down the middle towards their singular target. The blue-eyed master had to keep his eyes half-lidded to dim the brilliance of the clash that resulted, purple radiance smashing like a violet solar flare against the bristling white crackle of an unstable planetary shield, which of course was represented by their enemy's blade. Their exchange was as bright as a searing lightning bolt landing right in Master Obi-Wan's very face. In fact, it occurred to Kenobi that this was likely one of the reasons their troops had not tried to engage the Lone Imperial, whom they had surrounded already. That, and the fact that he was usually dangerously close to either Mace or himself, but the actual light given off by their rapidly clashing sabers was not helping matters. Master Mace Windu was outperforming even Obi-Wan's expectations of him, pulling the force into his body and empowering his strikes like the other master had never seen before. And yet, the Imperial contended, large booted feet digging troughs across the debris and dust-laden ground, resisting Mace's strength as he parried and blocked the amethyst-hued strikes Windu was slamming his way. His form was like some kind of brute force fusion of Xien and Niman, focusing on his size and strength, shoring up his defenses with the force, inciting bursts of power and speed while viciously exploiting or creating openings. Seeing a big bear of a man like him move so swiftly and so fast would have disoriented Obi-Wan had he not been a Jedi trained in a temple with various large yet deceptively fast fighters. Still, impressive a fighter though he was, the Imperial was, nonetheless, cornered and outnumbered, and he was, at best, equal with Master Windu, and that equality, if it even existed, was quickly draining out from the various blows the dark-eyed agent had already taken. He had no way out. The big imp had to know that. And yet the man kept on fighting and fighting. Despite not being as heavily armored or armed as Safran, nor as powerful in the Force as the Librarian had been, he was somehow succeeding in staving off their assaults again and again, and had already survived strikes which should have killed a normal human. Obi-Wan nodded to himself, reaffirming his earlier deduction. The Imperial agent they were now contending with must be a Space Marine, or something very, very similar. The man was of singular skill and technique, and so Kenobi did not leave all the heavy work to his fellow master, driving down and lancing in with his saber towards an opening that Mace had created for him to exploit. As with several times just previous, Obi-Wan felt that the battle would now end as his searing blue sword of light bit the air, humming as it sped in towards the gap in their foe's defenses. Here, the fight would end. It had to. And yet, the Imperial defied them again, face creasing, black eyes shimmering as he bellowed out a roar of exertion and pushed down on Mace's blade. 
changing the angle of their clash and hoisting himself up and out of the way. The insane maneuver had him flipping over their heads as he avoided Kenobi's spearing strike, Windu grunting as he was suddenly made a pillar for the agent's support. The imp spun in the air and landed heavily, facing them as blood drooled from his mouth and nose, still focused enough to get his guard up in time to catch Mace's near instantaneous counter-strike. But he was not quick enough to perceive that the high attack he had just caught was intended to make him vulnerable from below, a fact Mace Windu capitalized on right away. The dark-skinned Jedi Master kicked up with his knee directly into where the Imperial Man should have had his liver. The blow hit like the unsheathed uppercut of a Gendai Berserker, driving up into the man as it took the air out of the Imperial's lungs. Mace spun, pushing his enemy's blade to the side and kicked him in the ribs through the course of his spin. The attack sent the imp stumbling off balance, losing his feet and landing on his back. Groaning, he squinted his eyes as he recovered and then opened them wide as he barely intercepted Windu's descending blade tip, shoving it far enough to the left to keep it from impaling his chest. The saber turned molten the ground two inches to the right of the Imperial warrior's body, bloody teeth grit and bared, defiance burning as brightly as ever in his odd black eyes. But even now, Obi-Wan could see that the fight was as good as over this time. Standing back to cover Master Windu, but letting him finish his work, Obi-Wan watched the final moments of their two-on-one match. Mace withdrew his saber from the smoldering hole he had left in the metal ground and swept his weapon in an overpowering downward chop. Samael caught this strike as well, lethal light trapped on the sparking surface of his own energetic blade, but barely had the strength to hold it up, groaning again and even more loudly, face tense, blood-stained teeth visible as Mace pushed down on their sparking swords, driving the Inquisitor's pure white blade down within lethal inches of the imp's own chest and shoulder. Above the agent, Windu glared down at him with an intensity that bordered on hateful sadism, his expression stoic as cut stone and as filled with malice as any Kenobi had ever seen. Obi-Wan watched on, a spike of worry worming its way through him when he saw the grim turn Mace had taken in the course of this battle. However, he barely had time to appreciate or analyze his own growing concerns as a soft, premonition of incredible danger struck him, followed by the unmistakable sensation of ghastly bloodthirst. He snapped his arms up, feeling the force flow through him as he clapped his hands over his ears just as the air was filled with a shrill, demonic scream, his movements swiftly being imitated by nearly every clone trooper in the area around them. Mace Windu's face scrunched up into a pained expression, but he did not pull away or even flinch as the noise washed over them, keeping his posture even as separate, bright blue explosions suddenly blossomed out from all around them. Obi-Wan extended his hands to shield himself, creating a bubble of invisible power to prevent himself from being blown away by the metal and meat that came scattering out from the Azure detonations, pelting him from all sides. The blue blade-bearing master's eyes zoomed from side to side in his skull as he lowered his shield, legs spreading as his saber reactivated. What was happening? They were under attack? These thoughts speared through his mind as he sought his target, suddenly sensing a powerful malevolence approaching him and Mace from directly above them. His eyes shot up and he saw the shape of a lithe woman wearing a skull mask and a black, form-fitting outfit. Her descent was trailed by a long trench coat and the nearly golden tail of her pale blonde hair, revealing to the Jedi Master yet another form of Imperial fighter he had not encountered before. Mace spun to face her, his saber remaining pressed down against that of the Imperial Inquisitors, blocking the powerful double kick she aimed into him with nothing more than his forearm and the strength of the Force. And yet, even from here, Obi-Wan could see that Mace had instantly broken or fractured the bones in his forearm while performing the act. 
Master Kenobi was already running forward, speeding in their direction as he watched the Inquisitor twist under their sword lock, sliding Windu's unattended blade to the left and kicking up at the same moment. His heavy boot caught the back and side of the Jedi Master's bald head, the blow rocking Mace, but did not drop him, though it left him open for another kick from the woman as she began to push off from his block. This time, Obi-Wan interceded, catching her kick in his palm and wincing. He had already been prepared to absorb an incredible amount of force, but not quite this much. By the force, she kicked like a hurglick striking droid, maybe even harder, but Obi-Wan swept those concerns aside, closing his numbed hand and grabbing her tightly. Spinning on his heel, the Jedi drew in the force and heaved, throwing her off and away from his fellow master just as the Imperial Mace had previously had pinned to the ground, rolled off as well and rose to his feet. Turning to regard his friend and colleague, Obi-Wan saw that Mace was facing them fully with his saber side, his offhand painfully twitching behind his guard, blood trickling down from his ear and oozing from new scrapes he had just accrued. For a short time, the master's wounded offhand was hanging and twitching, before it suddenly stilled and he clenched his fist. Though it was certainly not as capable of delivering his deadly punches as it had been before his forearm had been fractured. Master Windu, are you? Obi-Wan began to say, but Windu nodded and waved him off with his injured arm. I'm fine. Let's focus. We've almost completed this assault. One more push, and we can break into their temple. This battle is almost finished, so let's finish it. May said, eyes narrow and burning from within. Don't count them out just yet, Master Windu. All forces are still recovering from those explosions. Visibility is bad and only getting worse thanks to all this smoke and dust. And let's not forget that more and more of these imps keep hopping out of the woodwork. Maybe we should... Kenobi began to respond. No! Snapped Mace, hefting his saber high, letting its glow color his features. We finish this, Master Kenobi, here and now, he ordered. Obi-Wan sighed heavily, but nodded his head. Have it your way, but I've got a pretty bad feeling about this, said Obi-Wan, turning to face the two they were fighting, spinning his blade up into a ready posture. Windu said nothing, merely turning to face the enemy, holding his amethyst blade out towards the Imperial. Conversely, Obi-Wan found himself facing off against the skull-faced young woman blinking as he took in her appearance more closely. She was smaller than he had estimated, and her eyes were an odd, glowing crimson sheen. Petite and slender like a dancer, he could see thanks to the tightness of her odd black suit that she was very nearly all muscle and sinew. This imperial warrior stalked towards him like a predatory beast, each second step stepping into the shadow of the first as she whined, and almost begged to be allowed to simply kill him. Obi-Wan Kenobi smirked and scoffed, unable to help himself. She had caught them with the element of surprise, but he doubted she could hold a candle to the likes of Asajj Ventress, though he chastened himself against underestimating her the moment the thought cropped up. Still, that discipline only extended so far, and he found himself cutting in. My dear, I'll be impressed if you can even keep up. Let's not get ahead of ourselves and claim a kilt just yet. He mocked in his best gothic, something she seemed to understand, her shiny red eyes glinting and widening more as she tilted her unnerving skull-like face. Kenobi squared up, raising his blade over his head and spreading his legs into a longer stance, channeling his focus. Despite his words, he knew he had to keep in mind that the potential of this girl could be absolutely lethal. He sharpened his eyes, his hand in the force strumming across its ephemeral strings, his metaphorical fingers looping around those which connected he and she together. Acting on a brief premonition, he double-clicked the calm at his waist, signaling for reinforcements, remaining centered on her as he did, giving her no gaps to exploit. 
They circled briefly, one considering the other, with Obi-Wan becoming so focused that he nearly did not sense the encroaching danger coming up from behind him. In those moments, just before all chaos broke loose, Obi-Wan's heel was raised, Mace was opening his mouth to bellow. The Imperial agent was bending his knees, and the female assassin began to advance. For Saint Lazarus! The war cry came from behind Kenobi and the recovering clone troopers, muffled by the wall but spoken through some kind of loudspeaker within. It was the only warning they got as suddenly the entire back end of those same walls exploded, timed charges detonating. Debris, dust, and shrapnel were carried forward on powerful concussive waves, filling the air with an even thicker film of particulates than before and making the light of the sun patchy, red, and dim. The hardest and most lethal pieces of the exploded walls blew into the backs of the clone troopers, shredding them and destroying their swift recovery. The shock waves that tore his troops apart also propelled Obi-Wan forward towards his enemy, the Jedi having known how to stand and when to jump thanks to the power of precognition alone. The woman released another scream through her mask as she saw him jetting towards her, but he was warded from the shock of that now that he had experienced it before, his face cringing, but his form unaffected as he charged through the air with a spin. She rushed to meet him with a grim determination, but he had the advantage here, for he was riding the blast, not confronting it like the Imperial was about to. They slashed at each other, her hands full of knives, his full of light, making contact three times. Within a trio of blazing strikes, the two wove death through the dust in the air, narrowly missing one another each time. Her blades resisted his saber, frustrating Obi-Wan, but his reach was far superior to her own, enabling him to keep her back as he observed her style of fighting. He scorched her arm with one strike, though in exchange, she drew three deep red lines across the right side of his face, just shallow enough to avoid his eyes. Then, she and he were propelled away by the blast, sent tumbling, controlled or not, through the air and across the murky battlefield. Flipping through the whirlwind of concussive force, the Jedi thought he could see her lose control as she was carried and thrown away by the shockwaves of the sudden explosion. But then he watched as the vaguest impression of her silhouette became visible through the dust, eyes tracking her as she spun and dodged past every piece of metal that sailed through the air near her, tumbling in a way that looked sloppy but could not have been more precise. She dervished up to her feet smoothly, landing among several unfortunate shadows that could only be clones. Kenobi grit his teeth tightly as he watched her become a black blur, tumbling and cartwheeling through the other silhouettes, knives whirling and spinning as she turned them into finely diced giblets. Emerging from a mist of dust and gore, the Imperial locked eyes with him and lunged, twisting in the air to avoid bolts and last fire as a confused crossfire began between the attacking and defending forces. Obi-Wan had little time to register the Imperial Guardsmen who now charged out from the wall and opened fire, everything beginning to move in nearly frozen time as men hefted the chainswords, aimed and discharged various guns, and sent pulses of light and death out from themselves. The horde of Imperial forces were led by a soldier who wore white cloth under green flak armor, his face painted in ashes to resemble a skull. But mostly what the Jedi saw and noticed was the sudden strafes of lethal light and munitions flying through the air, matching the encroaching woman warrior who was spinning and avoiding the exchange as well. Rushing to the center of their contact point, blue blade whirling, Obi-Wan caught the three curling claw-like knives she gripped between the knuckles of her right hand, air billowing from their unnaturally empowered clash. His sword sparked and keened torturously, her hooked blades holding his saber in place as she leaned inside of his guard, ruddy eyes wide and fixated on her foe. 
Obi-Wan tensed as he saw her left hand slice up with two other blades, these claws cutting the air and rushing for his throat. He caught the strike with his free hand, grasping her by the wrist and barely managing to keep her attack at bay. Struggling and sweating, he pushed against the Imperial woman's unnatural physical strength with his own force-wreathed power. But she was not done yet. Kicking off from the ground, bending her arms around her back and keeping his own arm and saber locked, her joints effortlessly popping to accommodate the maneuver as her legs wrapped around Kenobi's neck, catching him firmly and twisting. One step ahead, thanks once more to his precognition, Obi-Wan jumped in that moment, spinning himself with her twist to keep her from snapping his neck, the world twirling for both of them as he guided their fall to come down right on her head. But just as they hit the ground, she unlocked from him, rolling back as they came down, causing Obi-Wan to land heavily on his shoulder instead of her brain case, a blow he grudgingly accepted. On his back, Kenobi spun his legs to throw himself back up to his feet, rising only to fall backward again as he avoided a volley of blazing lethal las fire, rolling backwards and rising once more into a crouch. And there she was again, claws reaching for his eyes. He rose up, her blades correcting for his movement, and grabbed her wrist without even needing to think on it, only able to keep up with the attack by throwing his thoughts and mind away. Only the Force. There was only the Force. He had no time to be surprised, impressed, or frightened. They stood locked for a brief moment as she tried to force her hand into his face, tried to plunge her claws into his head. She was panting, chest rising and falling, but Obi-Wan was not sure if that was from exhaustion or mere excitement. Her red eyes wide, filled with a frenzy he could feel. His arm trembled as he held hers back, using the force to hold his strength and keep her claws from propelling themselves into his eyes. But his footing did not hold, and groaning, Obi-Wan began to slide backwards on the ground, feet skidding as the woman he was battling with began to walk and then run against him. By the force, what are they feeding you people? Kenobi grunted before slashing at her horizontally with the blade he held in his primary hand. The lightsaber streaked and then was halted, caught on the two other claw-like daggers she wielded in her off hand. He pushed against her, laying in on his own pressure as she pressed into him, beginning a contest to see who would buckle first. The answer, unfortunately for him, was obvious. She screamed in his face, the sound of Keen that threatened to break his composure. She was so small, so lithe, but utterly terrifying. He took back what he had considered before. This woman was easily the match or superior of Asajj, and as Obi-Wan probed her thoughts, he scrunched his face and mentally recoiled. She was evidently prepared for that kind of attack her mind being composed of a thousand blood-red shards, each one seeking to cut into him, even as he grasped the ones he could reach. The Jedi was horrified by the implication of that. How many times would a personality need to collapse to create this kind of mental structure? To break a mind so many times that its natural state became so segmented? Each shard, a broken piece of a whole, polished into individuality, flowing together and coming apart like a shoal of cooperative fish. He never felt that kind of mental defense before, and he briefly considered if the roaring girl before him was not some kind of humanoid alien. But those flash musings nearly cost him everything, and he disciplined his focus. He needed a way out of this mess, for he knew that even if he did not fail in his strength before she did, he would certainly trip backwards over something at any second. That second came as Obi-Wan's heel touched the torso of one of the clones she had cleaved to pieces. Yet, he did not simply allow himself to fall, raising his back bracing leg and kicking at her left flank with a fast, snapping strike. Kenobi winced, pain flooding his shin as his kick connected with her own kick. At least she had been forced to stop shoving him back, having only one leg now to hold herself up. 
both the Jedi and the Assassin balancing precariously on their single standing limbs while all three others remained locked and trembling, each countering the other. Okay, I'll admit it. He grunted, her knives clawing tips an inch and no more from his eyes. You can't keep up. The Jedi managed to say past his clenched jaw as she kept the pressure on, despite having the use of only one leg. I like your eyes, Jedi. She growled unexpectedly in response, pushing a little harder, the curved tips of her blades drawing a little closer. Ah, yeah? Let me guess. Imagining what they would look like outside of my head. He groaned, using more and more of the force just to keep himself upright. She suddenly blinked and tilted her face, affecting a surprised posture, the fistful of pressing daggers weakening in its pressure. How could you tell? Did you read my mind? No one can read my mind! She snapped at him. Obi-Wan took the opening she presented with her distraction, altering the sideways press of his lightsaber to angle further up, bending the knee of his single standing leg to crouch. All the while, he pushed up with his locked leg and pulled up instead of back with the hand he had locked around her wrist. Her bladed fist came forward, Obi-Wan twisting his head to the left to narrowly avoid it as it was slanted up and briefly bringing their faces together. One covered in its own blood and a pale, pained expression, the other spattered in the gore of many, hidden behind a white skull. She went to headbutt him immediately, making him catch her masked strike with a small force buffer before he twisted around, brought his leg down, and threw her a second time. The Imperial Assassin belted his ribs with a kick as she passed, spinning like a gymnast in the air and landing smoothly. Obi-Wan panted, rubbing his side with his free hand and shaking his head. I didn't have to read your mind, he said as he brought his glowing blue lightsaber before himself. Liar, cheater, witch! Hecate accused as she began to stalk forward once more, head jerking to the right to avoid a stream of last energy. Kenobi shook his head again, taking his saber in both hands. Unfortunately not. I just seem to attract that kind of attention from the women I meet. After all, you're only the second lovely warrior to suggest such a thing. He said, spinning his blade for a moment before settling into a stance. I laid flowers at the grave of the last one. He added more grimly, Don't make me lay flowers at your grave as well. Surrender! The Jedi Master warned. She paused and again seemed shocked by the words. You think I'll get a grave? Really? She asked through her mask, seeming entirely genuine, almost childish. A pang surged through Kenobi then. This girl, she was a weapon. And that was how the Imperials treated her, how they had shaped her to be. He drove the feeling away, however, sighing and crouching, his blade lighting his face. He did not have mastery enough to show any kind of pity to this creature. I'll dig it myself, he promised, taking a step closer, knowing already that this kind of person would not even know the meaning of surrender. He saw her eyes shift and realized she must be smiling under that horrific mask. I'll dig one for you too, if I can find enough of you to bury! She howled before lowering her head and leaning into a charge. The small, powerful assassin whipped her free hand out, throwing her daggers at him, though it was only when he swept his blade to block them that he realized she had thrown even more than that. Metal debris and shards were mixed in with the seemingly Beskar-plated daggers. As the proofed blades bounded off his saber's magnetic field, the other objects passed through, becoming molten before spattering across Kenobi's robes. He winced in pain from the heat, stepping back in surprise, only to realize he had just killed himself. Time slowed again, his eyes pushing up in his sockets to gradually see where she was. 
The woman had run up behind the thrown weapons, fast as a windborne phantom, and leapt up into the air as he had begun to block her weapons. Her spinning, deflected knives seemed to almost roll intentionally into her hands, slender but deceptively powerful fingers closing around the handles of her death-dealing claws. Her arms raised even now as she retrieved them and beginning to arc down towards her target. But Obi-Wan simply could not keep pace with the lunge, trying to bring his saber up to stop her, trying to summon forth the force to push her away. But his trembling, tired arms were simply not ready and not fast enough, and as the force began to answer his call, it collided with a different call emanating from a different being. He realized at that moment that she was not just a weapon, she was a force wielder as well, and just as their limbs had locked before, so too now did their conjoined calls to the metaphysical powers of the force. Helpless to prevent her strike, Obi-Wan could do nothing but watch her descend. But he also saw, in that terrible frozen time, everything else around him. The blaster bolts, the strafing laser streams from the las guns, and even the bullets which whistled through the air. And in that exact moment, he saw also the smoking airborne body of a nearby grenade launcher's munition discharge arching right over their heads. He grasped it with his mind, unable to pull it to himself quickly, but grateful for the velocity it already had for that very reason. He altered its course and yanked it straight down, near and nearly between them. The explosion sent them both smoking and rolling away, the assassin having been mere millimeters from his neck when the shockwave of the blast caught and carried them both. Shards of shrapnel went scattering everywhere, Obi-Wan rolling with the blast and between most of the pieces that came his way. In that time, he did not have the freedom of mind to track the assassin or her progress, hitting the ground soon after the hard thud and rolling. Kenobi puffed out a harsh cough, waving his saber warningly over himself, temporarily lost to the world as he recovered from the sudden blast. Feeling like he had just been sent through a sonic flenser, the Jedi Master crawled to his feet, pulling dusty, burnt air into his lungs in deep gasps. The thunder and howl of weapons trembled the air all around him as he tried to get his senses back into full cohesion, but he did not hear her signature scream. His eyes swept back and forth, but he couldn't see where she had gone, the assassin having at least temporarily vanished into the smoky miasma which surrounded him. But he did see the two other Imperials who had found him, both men in the guardsman uniform, both angled to fire upon him, though from the looks on their faces, they were even more surprised than he was to find themselves in his sudden presence. Their barrels swept down, his blade swept up, the battle starting and ending as fast as a lightning strike, at least for them. But to Obi-Wan Kenobi, it all moved sluggishly, time still slowly passing thanks to his extremely recent brush with death, each moment sliding by frame by lazy frame. His blade cut their weapons in half, the volatile gunpowder in each of them detonating milliseconds before his saber had sliced cleanly through the slug-throwing weapons. The two imp men were thrown back on the explosions of their own guns, Kenobi rolling away right into a rising upward slash, his luminous blade flensing through two other Imperial soldiers. Cleaving their bodies and limbs, burnt blood steaming the air as Obi-Wan rose up past them. Precognitive instincts filling his mind, the Jedi Master leaned back, narrowly avoiding the path of a thrown knife, its impossibly honed edge splitting the air. The blade was thick, serrated, and new, emerging from the fog of war around him. Sensing more, Obi-Wan raised both his free hand and his saber-bearing one in a wide gesture, appearing to make an open challenge into the wall of dust and smoke beside him, through which were pitched nine grenades. Snatching the explosives that had been tossed right out of the air with the force, there was a very brief pause where the weapons hung suspended on invisible tethers before he threw his hands forward. 
The gesture flung the grenades back the way they'd come, men yelling in alarm and one beginning to scream in terror as their munitions were speedily returned and detonated. Those who survived his counter were swiftly mopped up as clones stormed the position, emptying blaster rifles into the remaining Imperials. Over their heads, the smoke had blocked out all but the red light, framing the Star Destroyers above in blood as they continued to bombard the walls and temple grounds with brilliant blasts from their turbo laser batteries. The clones were regrouping, and the Imperial reinforcements were vying desperately to keep and make use of the advantage their surprise attacks had caused. Obi-Wan noticed their leader, a man in sackcloth armor and painted in ashes, one hand holding a rifle, the other a combat knife as he frantically gave orders and gestured. He was at the center of one of the mobs of soldiers, and Kenobi spat to the side, his spit full of blood and grit. The cuts on his face did not impede his sight, thanks to being below his eyeline, but the thick red streams which now flowed down from his wounds were quickly getting into his nose and mouth. His body was bruised inside and out from the two shockwaves of explosive force the Jedi had been made to endure, pale skin discoloring on his face and under his robes. Wanting to end this, but unwilling to abandon his troops and colleague in the midst of battle, he turned to face the obvious Imperial leader and began to stride in his direction, his intention to shatter the spine of this Imperial force before they could do anything else to prolong this engagement. Then, as if in answer to his very thoughts, Kenobi was spotted and intercepted by a woman in powered armor, who was carried aloft on blazing wings. She landed almost on top of him, the Jedi Master throwing himself with a force-empowered leap and managing to avoid being pulverized like the two other clones she had landed on top of. This new, fierce woman did not let up, however, suddenly rocketing from the shattered ground and into his direction, catching his blue, coldly burning blade on her own, sparking engraved one. Kenobi barely managed to catch her sudden attack, grunting as he sucked in a breath, his boots scraping across the ground and leaving small trenches in the dust and ripples in the metal as he repelled her. He swept out with his saber, throwing her back several feet with his force-empowered strength. She recovered from this with a deft ease, a jet-powered spin correcting her in the air after she was thrown and bringing her right back to him, landing and drawing her weapon up into a combat stance. Her face was bare, furious, and streaked with blood, brilliant eyes rimmed in a golden shine. Obi-Wan straightened and shook out his shoulders before raising his blade. He could not help but worry about Mace Windu as Kenobi faced down yet another female warrior, this one the polar opposite of what the last had been like. Well, in most ways. Though their bloodlust and frenzied skill were similar enough, as he would soon discover. Mace Windu stood before this confounding man, this Imperial agent who had lied to him, used their meeting together to find and kill Jedi and rebels alike. Safran from what Mace had been exposed to, had been a man merely fighting and winning for an atrocious cause. There was no deception with him beyond what two trained warriors might rightly exchange between each other in the midst of battle. This man, however, was disgusting in the eyes of the Jedi Battlemaster. He tried to assassinate Windu, and had succeeded in assassinating one of the rebel leaders. He had been found trying to kill a helpless girl for the mere crime of being an alien. And he had killed the boy who had dove in to save her. And then, after being cornered, he had tried to convince him and Obi-Wan that he was right with yet another lie. Always lying, deceiving, and using what he gained from that to kill innocents and warriors alike. So how and why was a man who relied on duplicity and low cunning to win his battles still alive? Obi-Wan had named him a space marine, and Windu was forced to concur as he continued their struggle. For in time it became more than clear that the man was no mere human. 
How could a human survive that many direct strikes from his own force-empowered fist? And almost more frustrating than the Imperial Killer's durability was the additional recognition of something Mace Windu was loath to accept or acknowledge despite his lack of choice in the matter. This evil man was undeniably skilled in a way that Mace was not sure he could match. Of course, when it came to direct swordplay and even certain applications of the Force, Windu was certain that he had the Imperial dead to rights. But the way the warrior of the Empire could just keep fighting, even with grievous injuries, that was what had the powerful Mace Windu performing mental double takes. It was one thing for a man to be resilient, it was another for him to seem effectively unaffected by the growing patchwork of wounds which were being inflicted on him. Yes, he sagged and bled and grunted with effort, but it was as if all of those signs of weakness vaporized whenever he would be re-engaged, not slowing or weakening, not acting worn down at all when sabers crossed. And now Windu had to finish him alone, and he chastened his discipline. The potent Lord of the Jedi had prepared himself for another encounter and aped Obi-Wan as the other master sensed the coming explosion. His wordless battle cry becoming commingled with the boom of the blast which erupted out from behind him. His feet kicked off the filthy steel ground as he accelerated towards his target, riding the wave of force like a Mantakan sailfish rides a wave of water. He bolstered the force of his acceleration with the power of his mind, throwing himself with abandon in the direction of the tall, imperial agent who even then seemed to brace for the coming impact. The dark-eyed man swelled with his limited strength in the force, dust and blood billowing off of his large body, born red teeth gritting visibly. The Imperial clutched his shimmering white sword in both hands and raised it forward as he exerted himself, cutting into the oncoming blast with a column of blade-like power. It was as though he had created a sharpened shield within the Force, bricks of plaster, shards of metal, and portions of bodies being cleaved in half by the power as they blew against his new defense. Mace met it directly and fluidly, spinning into the path of the enemy's invisible presence and connecting with it, Vapad engaging, though only with one arm. And yet, Mace drained very little power from it as he made contact. Now gritting his own teeth, as the vaunted Battlemaster found he was forced to rely on another strength of his to succeed in the moment. His vision sharpened dramatically, pupils becoming the size of pinpricks as Windu summoned forth his Shatterpoint ability. Seeing the lines that connected everything together, physical and metaphysical. Wreathing his left leg in force-born power, Mace Windu kicked into the side of the sharpened barrier which his purple saber was barely holding him back from, colliding with the force field powerfully and shattering it completely. The Imperial recoiled, the wind and debris from the blast now buffeting him and throwing him back as Master Windu drove in and down. He angled his lightsaber for an impalement, eyes still enhanced by his latent talent for seeing weaknesses, intensity high as he sought to carve a victory quickly out of this man's chest. To counter this, the imp released one hand from his saber, extending it and exerting out a concussive explosion of the force, pushing himself up in a sudden burst of power and bouncing himself off in a direction Windu had not anticipated. The big man's body vanished through the wall of dust and debris the explosion had kicked up a moment ago, the Jedi Master scowling at the sudden turn. Mace flipped and cartwheeled briefly, arresting his momentum and skidding to a stop as what was left of the shockwave blew past him, billowing his torn and smoking robes, using the back of his saber hand to knock away the shrapnel that came flying for him. From where the blast had come, Imperial soldiers of various varieties came pouring out, a pack of savages which they had somehow missed or failed to contain when clearing the wall. Windu noticed at once how they rallied around a man, another insane religious figure, his face covered in grey and white corpse ash, painted to seem more skull-like. They roared their religious zeal, and the Jedi felt a flood of anger spill into his blood, filling his veins with a rage he had difficulty controlling. 
These zealots dared to invade the order of the universe, to destabilize what his people, the Jedi Order, had been dying to preserve. Why was he being tested like this? Why would the Force allow such beings to even exist? As those thoughts stirred his mind, his eyes blazed into brilliant hues of red and yellow, swirling vortexes of his intolerance for the very existence of the Imperials. But this lasted for a moment, and then he was gone, traveling as fast as a speeder could fly, blurred body moving directly towards the center of the enemy formation. He could see the weakness in their army, in their viciously battling forces, and the key to victory was tearing the heart out of this so-called saint's chest. Everything around Mace slowed to a temporal crawl as he sped up, moving faster and faster, legs pumping, leaving shallow dents in the ground. He ran as quickly as he could through the freezing time space he now occupied, his left arm throbbing with pain that he no longer ignored, but embraced, allowing it to fill his arms and legs with further fire. He slammed into the first line of Imperial soldiers like a bullet fired from a giant's gun, leaping in the final stretch of his approach, vaulting over last fire and bullets of every kind before driving himself from the air and into their mass. Mace Windu's impact was a gloriously violent example of the power he now held, slamming down into the ground with his fist and expelling a powerful, outward-facing globe of expanding kinetic energy. The Imperials directly beneath him were crushed and blasted into pieces, their dismembered bodies blowing the others around him away, disorienting and disrupting nearly every nearby soldier. Mace rose slowly from the smeared crater he had created, his eyes narrowing once again as he slowly stood and glared about in a steady semicircle at the guardsmen around him. The glow of his radiant weapon colored the steam and dust which rained down around him, the world enshrouded in red light and black shadows thanks to the smoke which now filled the sky. And in that darkness and blood, he shone with his shimmering power, a black silhouette against the nimbus of amethyst fog. To the clones that saw him, he was their lord of war shrouded in the power that would ensure their victory. To the Imperials, he was a dark herald of death, one they had trained their entire careers as soldiers to fight against. DIE STANDING! The Imperial Saint bellowed from behind them, aiming his own weapon down at Mace, standing on something which allowed him to be visible over the heads of the others. They bellowed cries of war, slow and deep in the near-frozen time Windu inhabited, raising their rifles and letting loose several volleys of searing hot streams of energy as well as storms of solid bullets. The beams streaked through the air, and Windu swayed out of the way, his afterimage being left in his wake like that of a bladed fan. Crouching and dashing under the first blasts, Mace relished the knowledge that, having missed him, the shots would now strike their own who had been standing behind him. He slid between two soldiers, ducking low as he snipped their bodies in half with his phantom passing, rising to his full height after, but never ceasing his movement. He cleaved two luminous beams of deathly light on the edge of his blade, deflecting them into the faces of the two men who had fired them. Master Windu whirled, saber out as he crouched low again, cutting the feet out from three more screaming men, all of whom had charged him with melee weapons of various kinds. As they tripped over their own lack of legs, falling forward and into each other, Windu, who crouched beneath and between them, thrust his broken arm up, holding it straight with the force and issuing out a column of power from his palm. The sudden blast of energy sent the unfortunate crippled men flying away end over end, bodies arching high over the crowd. Just then, clone gunships split the haze and smoke, their white armored hulls seeming to glow almost crimson in the eerie light. Supporting fire and reinforcements fell out from them, and May soon found the imps around him fleeing and falling back to the broken teeth of the wall, and what shelter it could provide them. Then, he felt something, 
danger coming closer, and he spun on his heel, blade rising and flashing up as the Imperial he had been fighting before re-engaged the power to his brilliant white saber, emerging like a charging reek from the haze. They clashed powerfully, blowing the falling ashes and drifting smoke away as they collided, both grunting with exertion as their blades keened and screamed against each other. Mace was forced to hold his weapon in two hands to keep the pressure exerted by his foe from overcoming him. His broken arm sent powerful pangs of pain through his mind, and Windu felt them becoming power as well as fueling his fury. Damn, you're a strong witch, I'll give you that much. The Imperial grunted, nostrils flaring as he pressed in even harder. And you are a braver liar than most to come back here, to face me after what you did. Mace spat back. The Jedi Master kicked, kneeing up into the man's side and making him grimace before the Imperial grit his teeth and pushed down with all his might, empowering himself with the Force and driving the Jedi's blade down. Windu's face scrunching as a rising groan of pain escaped his lips. One of the Imperial's large hands released the handle of his strange white lightsaber, reeling it back quickly to bring hard across Windu's face. The blow driving them both spinning away as the man's one arm buckled under the weight of Windu's double-handed upward press. They both staggered back, raising their weapons. Trust me, General. Every lie I tell is for the good of mankind, yourself included. There are things in this universe that you Jedi are clearly not ready to manage. Better to let me and mine mop up this mess you're making before it devours us all whole said the man, Samael. Mess we're making? You are the genocidal savages who came here and began killing our people. Something I won't let you do anymore. Windu bellowed, rage flowing through him as thickly as blood. He crouched his legs and leapt at the Imperial agent, swiping with his sword one-handed, but was unprepared for the other assailant that suddenly spun into melee. The skull-masked woman returned, flying out from the dust and grime like a black lance. She released another scream as she did, disrupting Windu's form in the midst of his attack. The assassin intercepted him mid-air, slashing, but he caught her knives on his blade, prompting her to lift and twirl over his head, kicking down at him several times as she did. Mace swayed his head to avoid the first two kicks, but then Samael was on him, forcing the Jedi to hastily block a forward chop, which tossed him back, catching the last kick on his broken left arm. That made him cry out, shuffling backwards as he tried to keep his balance and raising his blade to ward off their advance. She rolled onto all fours once she hit the ground, and then leapt up after only a brief moment, reeling back and pouncing. The strange woman moved far, far too fast, outdistancing her master, who sagged and began to circle, eyeing openings in the conflict like a shark rounding its prey. The female assassin fell onto Mace in a frenzy, and he found his incomplete vape had style to be entirely ineffective against her, rapidly shifting his stance to that of classical Juyo, pressing her offense with his own. But, while she did not seem to be using the Force, her impacts hit too powerfully to be natural, and her attacks were composed of a nearly unceasing onslaught, striking with hands, knives, shins, and knees. She was short and stayed low, forcing Windu into an even lower stance than he was used to, unable to properly wield his vaunted Yuyo aggression form against her thanks to his broken arm and she was driving him back because of it. He wanted to strike out with his lightsaber to sear her body in half, but the way she attacked made that difficult without trading a wounding blow for a lethal one. Several times he had been forced to ignore an obvious opening which had presented itself due to the sheer amount of knives she was somehow literally juggling between her hands. The demented Imperial woman's attacks always came down with at least two points of contact, even if deceptively, forcing the Jedi Battlemaster to keep both arms engaged in defense. Whenever he would attack, 
She would answer with a powerful kick of her own, seemingly willing to take a serious risk or even face death so long as it meant landing a critical strike on her opponent. In these moments, Windu had been driven back into a defensive stance, veering out of his favorite offensive strategy and putting his lightsaber form at a serious disadvantage. Still, he knew how to defeat this kind of assault. He just needed to catch her in a similar movement and beat her in their mutual race to draw blood, something he could do with a directed burst of his force imbued speed and power. He just needed to feel out when the right moment would come, something he could do with his shatter point. But then, his situation grew more dire, as the first combatant returned as well, emerging with the speed and ferocity of a man far less injured than he was, encroaching from the opposite side of his current focus. Windu spun to face him, throwing out a clenched fist to punch with. A fist the man caught in his enormous hand, absorbing the force of the strike as he grinned into Windu's face. He brought his own energy blade across the Jedi's midsection, intending to seal his fate. Grunting in pain, Windu swiftly snapped up his left leg, catching Samael's forearm with his knee to kick and drive away the bisecting strike. And yet, in the same moment as his kick, the woman rushed him, the fang-like knives between her knuckles borne forward in an attempt to strike. Saber locking with the second attack the Inquisitor attempted, Windu headbutted the Imperial Man's forehead, stunning him for a moment as the Jedi leaned against his sparking white sword. Mace rolling around him and lifting a purple saber to catch the knives on his radiant blade. Pushing her off and away with a burst of increased strength, he found she could not keep hold of the knives, the weapons going flying in response to the unexpected counter-strike. But the assassin did not let it end there. Spinning back with the energy given to her, twirling like a top in the air, she caught Windu's chin with a solid kick on her hardened boots. As she flipped back and gained distance, Mace felt the jolt, felt his mind automatically scatter in response to the sudden, fast kick to his chin and reacted instinctively with another expanding globe of telekinetic power. The exertion blowing his two combatants away as he gasped and staggered, vision splitting and distorting. With a deep breath, the powerful but slowing Jedi collected his senses, eyes focusing as he looked in either direction. Now he was really starting to feel the pressure, a stream of his sweat sliding down his face and across his lips, mingling with the blood that now leaked from the corner of his mouth. The two began to circle him from either direction, Samael facing him like a proper swordsman, sidestepping, his white blade flaring brightly as he angled it with both his hands in Windu's direction. Meanwhile, the other prowled like a predator, crouching as she pursued each of his movements with her wide, red eyes, each ruby sphere glinting in the haze which surrounded them. Hurry up then, Mace growled, his head turning from one to the other. I don't have all day, the Jedi Master demanded, knees bending and saber raising as he prepared himself. Hecate, remember, Warlock Prime, the Imperial man known as Samael said. Yes, just like an elf, the masked assassin hissed in cold delight. Together they launched, simultaneously flying straight into Mace Windu. The Jedi Master spun around, drawing color through the red air, Amethyst Blade sweeping upwards to clash powerfully with the downward slash Samael encroached with. Sparks bled from the crackling blades of energy, and both men were driven back from each other by several feet through the force of their strikes. Boots scraping the earth, dust filling the air in their wake. Windu had no time to properly recover, however, twisting even as he kicked up dust and debris, sweeping his blade to cover his back and letting the purple saber spin free from his grip. It dervished around him, making a quick, glaive-like loop which forced Heke to draw back her blade-bearing hands, lest she lose them. She growled in frustration as she and he slid past one another, the sound rumbling and amplified by her mask. Mace slid to a stop in a crouch, and from there began to run forward immediately, feet skidding and then thundering across the ground as he jogged straight into the two charging opponents. 
purple blade back in hand and weaving artistically through the burned air. Samael engaged directly, Saber colliding with his while Hecate leapt from the ground and onto the Inquisitor's shoulder. She pushed off from his broad upper body as he kept Mace locked, spinning over Windu's head. The Jedi slipped a quick kick under Samael's guard, shoving him back and using the space to spin, trying to catch her body in a bisecting slash. But she had spun much closer to him than he had anticipated, and she did not fall into the path of the blade, instead landing with two hands on the Jedi's shoulder, holding herself perfectly upright as he slashed the air with his burning blade. Mace barely had time to understand what had just happened before she curled and rolled down, wrapping her arms around his shoulder as her legs coiled to catch and lock down the rest of his arm and wrist. Her skull mask grinned into his face as she prevented his sword arm from moving, blood-red eyes bemusedly and lazily regarding him as he suddenly found his weapon constrained. Mace grit his teeth angrily and balled his free hand into a fist, curling it around to punch straight between her smug eyes. He cried out then as something caught his other arm, fiery pain cascading through him as Samael's energy sword cleaved through it. Mace Windu's forearm flew through the air, severed at the center points of his ulna and radius bones. He roared in pain, his squinting eyes able to see the glowing sword of his enemy reversing its path, this time angled to sear open his guts. The Jedi Battlemaster dropped, letting his feet go limp, putting the woman curled in his arm in the path of the blade. She did not release him to escape, her eyes always on his, utterly unshaken by the prospect of her own death. But as Windu had hoped, Samael did deactivate his blade to prevent the insane woman locking up Mace's weapon arm from being sliced in half. Samael's face creased and his nostrils flared as he was forced into the maneuver. However, that did not stop him from kneeing Windu in the face, throwing him back and up, at which point the woman on his arm twisted, bending his limb to the limit as they fell, curling up on him painfully moments before she began sliding and kicking away. Rolling on the ground nearby, she left him gasping for air after her two departing kicks caught his ribs. Windu staggered upright, teeth clenched as he watched his two opponents split once again, flanking his defense once more. He pressed the cauterized stump of his left arm against his chest and robes, feeling his broken nose, his cracked jaw, his bruised ribs, and the various injuries given to him by Safran, which had barely recovered thanks to back to inhaler treatments. Things were officially beyond getting bad, and he sagged under his growing weakness as the fight raged on all around them, but the thought of withdrawing galled him. He would not run before this enemy. Windu would not show them his back, he would show them only his blade and fist. He drew power from the pain of his wounds, sucking it in like a perverse potion of fire, filling himself with it, his eyes flickering into fiery inner life. A turbo laser slammed down into a relatively nearby pillbox, and it detonated a stack of scrolls that had been close. The papers were burnt and scattered into the air on another column of fire, the burning remnants of the prayer scrolls spreading out and drifting down like black, lazy rain. The assassin's eyes flashed, flickering with as much fire as Windu's, and the Inquisitor's recently reactivated blade pulsed with lethal intent as the man began to edge in the opposite direction of his agent. Come on, then! Master Windu yelled at them both, Ashes catching on his eyebrows and staining his robes as he spread what remained of his arms in open challenge. What are you waiting for? Fight me! He boomed. The two Imperials charged at the provocation, the woman cartwheeling towards him, spinning higher and higher. All the while, the large man charged hard across the ground, storming directly towards Windu, face grave as he swung his blade in a searing arc. They were both moving in slow motion to the Jedi Master, their speed made sluggish until it was something he could track as he sucked in a new, heated power. 
Windu knew he would need to move between them. He would need speed. He saw it all with his Shatterpoint technique, the way in which he could win. The Jedi Master began to run, weapon arm, burnt arm stump, and legs trembling as he filled them with as much of this writhing power as he could. The Force would favor him, the Force would save the Jedi, and it would do so by way of his blade. Leandra Ordain felt her every muscle creak as she contended with the Jedi, who was himself obviously wounded. She would have had him, were she not just as worse off as he was, her vaunted suit of holy armor pocked with damage of every conceivable kind, several vital servos failing completely. This forced the Sororitas warrior to memorize them, eschewing any and all movements or maneuvers which would make her rely on the parts of her armor which had failed. And, conditioned though she was for this kind of attrition, fighting this man meant that doing this was not always possible. And he seemed to know it as well, appearing to learn those weaknesses more and more intimately with every passing keening clash of their powered weapons. Her blessed blade was not the equal of the Tabahaiv, but it served admirably as it drove off the blonde Jedi's counter-strikes. Parries and blocks between them, sending pulses of stark light through the red haze which enveloped them, two warrior gods in the midst of a storm, forging lightning with each swing. When he would force her to move where her armor was weak, Leandra would scream rage, pushing her limp armor into position by sheer grit and human strength alone. But how much more of that did she have left in her? Her faith fed her power, gave her the energy she needed to go on, but she felt like she was on a ledge, held from falling by no more than a blessed wind at her back. Should that wind falter, for even a moment... The man thrust his palm almost into her chest, the sister of battle skidding back from the strike, but still receiving the blow as it traveled through the air between them on invisible tendrils of witch strength. She was sent tumbling, falling, collapsing into a heap, the Jedi Master throwing his saber at her even before she had landed. Using every last ounce of her combat awareness, she clumsily angled her blade into the path of the Jedi's weapon, grunting in shock as the glowing saber met hers with an unusually heavy blow, knocking her sword out of her hands and sending it clattering to the floor. But not the Jedi's weapon, which spun back up, guided by his heretical powers, arching into the air while spinning like a saw blade, meeting the master in the sky as he jumped up and caught it, point angled down and saber held in two hands as the Jedi descended on her from on high. Emperor, she whispered, eyes wide as plates, armor faltering, failing to move her out of the way. But the Emperor was with her, something proven a moment later as the Jedi was tackled out of the air by a speeding figure, a guardsman. No, not just any guardsman, Saint Lazarus himself. Using his artificial arm and leg to propel himself upward harder than he might have with natural muscles bowling into the Jedi and throwing him to her right. Leandra struggled to rise, armor whining and screeching as she brought herself back up to her feet in a sluggish rumble of trembling technology. In the time it took her to rise, St. Lazarus's brief battle with the man had ended. Lazarus stabbed the surprised blonde Jedi with an adamantium combat knife wielding it in his robotic arm and sinking it into his abdomen, seven inches of mechanicus tempered steel breaching the master's body before he was even able to react. The witch warrior cried out in pain, but never stopped moving, slicing down with his saber and lopping off Lazarus's knife hand. The newly appointed Imperial Saint grit his teeth in a frenzied half-smile of an expression as his other arm reached down, seizing a grenade from his belt, his thumb hooking under the pin. But the grenade was yanked out of his hand by another demonstration of witchling power, the pin remaining on his thumb as the grenade flew into the Jedi's free hand, where the witch then tossed it far over his shoulder, the detonation following shortly after reaching none of them. 
Simultaneously, he swung that blue sword of energy again, cleaving off Lazarus' mechanical leg as well, oil sizzling and pressurized servos squealing as they were seared cleanly in two. The saint born of the guard collapsed, his armament spent, his lasgun long since discarded. Leandra tried to stop what was about to happen, clambering for her sword, barely able to pick it up by the time the Jedi had raised his blade to strike the final blow, but was elated to find she was not the only one moving to act. A line of the guard who remained roared and rained fire from their las guns and auto pistols, straight into the Jedi's direction, forcing him to raise the blade of his defense and dance away from where he loomed over the fallen saint. Holy sword now in hand, she rushed over to him, finding him attempting to crawl backwards with his two remaining limbs. What are you doing? You cannot throw yourself at the Republic's witch lords like that! We cannot lose you! She scolded as she grabbed him by the back of his flak armor, servos squealing as she lifted him, letting him lean against her for balance. He looked at her, his half-grin still present, his expression and remaining organic eyes showing the madness that had nearly taken him. Explain that to your mother, he said as she tried to carry him back and away from the fight, their movements slow at best. I'm not the one who's going to give her the news that her daughter died before I did. Well, before I did again. She charged me with your safety, the safety of everyone left. I can't just... He ranted, delirious with panic and adrenaline. And she could see why. More and more troopers of the Republic were flooding in every second, coming from all directions as they stormed the broken walls behind them and descended from above on jetpacks and warbling, hovering support craft. She needed to get him back behind the lines, but there were barely any lines anymore, their diminished forces burning away as they were rapidly surrounded reduced to clusters of resistance that were quickly being herded into their own center. They were outnumbered 20 to 1, and the odds simply kept growing worse and worse. For every Republic replica she cut down, eight more would take their place, their faceless, white phantom helmets appearing in droves as they charged through fire, repelled down through smoke, and swarmed in a pale mass of foes who were quickly decimating the men of the Guard and the sisters of her order. Going somewhere? Asked a sarcastic but tired voice, and Leandra looked around behind her to see that the Jedi Master was no longer engaged, men of the Empire strewn about him. He held his blade in one hand, angled forward, his face pale and grimacing, his free hand tightly pressing into his recently acquired wound, applying hard pressure to the place where the knife had fallen out of him. I cannot allow you to escape. He said more seriously, taking a step forward. Leandra glared, but set St. Lazarus down. You can't, the man began to say, but Leandra shook her head stiffly. I must, she stated, and after a moment's pause, in which she sat the former major against some rubble, he seemed to relent and nodded. The Emperor is with you. He said, his voice and face far more stoic now, his combat delirium settling. She nodded, standing up shakily and turning to face the Jedi once more. Always, she affirmed. You cannot beat me. You can barely move. Surrender and you will be treated fairly. This is your last chance. The Jedi offered when his eyes met her own. She shook her head, stabbing her blade into the ground and reaching up to her armor, slowly tearing off a portion of her breastplate and reaching for a red handle under the panel of ceramite she had dislodged. Leandra yanked on it, her armor slackening in the process, several other plates on her shoulders and arms falling away. There is no retreat. She intoned, reaching behind herself and finding another albeit twisted handle, and yanking on that one as well. There is no surrender. Leandra continued to say, the back half of her plate creaking and falling open, kneeling down afterwards to unlock her mechanized sabatons. There is no escape. The battle sister spoke as she shook off most of the remaining ruined warplate and stepped out of the rest. She grasped her sword once more, hefting it into a combat stance, 
now dressed in nothing more than the form-fitting undersuit which helped her control her powered armor. There is only war. She finished, surprised that the man had allowed her the courtesy of shedding her dead weight, though she knew also that, without her enhanced strength and speed, calling her position disadvantaged was a severe understatement. The Jedi grimaced and shook his head, raising his saber back straight as the smoke around him was roiled and pushed by the repulsor lift technologies of seven new Republic gunships. More Jedi and clones standing at the open doors and staring down over the Jedi Master's shoulders. If you insist, he relented, his knees beginning to bend as clones and witches began to rain down onto the battlefield all around and behind him. He raised his glowing blade before his face in what Leandra realized was a duelist salute. She returned the gesture with a grim nod. Win or lose, this was the natural state. This was true war for the Republic, he said before lowering the blade and beginning his advance, hand still clutching his wound, his true target watching from behind Leandra. For the Emperor. She responded, grasping her blade in both hands and moving forward, ready to embrace her god in glorious death.